Okay, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I am Eileen Doherty, and I am the director of the Colorado Gerontological Society. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, <clears throat> although a very important topic in our Aging in Place series, um, it's a relatively simple presentation today in terms of how um, the information that we will be sharing. So what we wanted to share today is some information on the Tabor refund. Um, the Tabor refund is money that comes from sales tax. So um, this is money that goes to the state of Colorado, regardless of what you, um, regardless of your income or anything like that. Um, this is money that is that you pay every time you go to the grocery store to purchase, um, <clears throat> not well, if you purchase paper towels, if you go to Target and you buy a pencil, uh, you buy clothing, anything like that. The state of Colorado has a law called the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which some of you may have heard of. What that particular uh, constitutional amendment did a number of years ago is that it said that the state of Colorado's government can only keep a certain amount of money and grow by so much each year. And any money that they collect over and above that amount of money has to go back to the taxpayers. And so many of us have become very familiar with the Tabor refund or getting a refund on our taxes um, every year or some at least amount of money back. Or if we are in the workforce, we pay less um, Colorado income tax because of the Tabor refund. It's available to everyone 18 and over regardless of your age. Um, <clears throat> you, um, you're you always, in, or you, everyone is entitled to it. So not just you as an older adult, um, some of the programs sometimes that we promote are only available for older adults. This one is available to you, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, your friends, people at church, doesn't matter. If you are a full year Colorado resident in 2023, you are eligible for this refund if you are 18 and over. The other thing that the state legislature did this year, which is very, very helpful for everyone, is oftentimes this refund is refunded or given back to the taxpayers based on your annual income. Last fall, when there was a special session of the state legislature, they decided to make this a standard refund of $800 for everyone, regardless of your income. So if your income is $10,000 a year, you will get $800. If it is $500,000, it is still going to be $800. So how do you apply? So there are several different ways that you can claim this refund. The first way that if you are a wage earner, if you worked in 2023, you will have to file federal and state income tax. And when you file state income tax, you will file what's called a DR0104. And that then will be the document that reduces the amount of state income tax that you owe. And if you have overpaid, then you will get a refund. If you make $25,000 or less a year and you did not work, then you can file a form called the DR-0104EZ. 
And for any of you who have worked with us over the last few years, as people have applied for the various refunds and rebates and tax credits that have been available through the state of Colorado, this one is a little bit more simplified. I'm not gonna tell you it's the easiest thing in the world, but I'm gonna tell you it's more simplified. If your income is between 18,026 and 25,000 as a single person, rather than filing the DR0104EZ, you can file the PTC 104. And that will actually get you two, one refund and one tax credit. So depending on where you fit in this um, group of one, two, or three will depend on which form you file. So the wage earners, um, the amount of the refund really depends on the amount of state income tax that you owe. So let's just use an example that says that you owed $2,000 in state income tax. Out of your salary, they deducted $2,500. So that means under normal circumstances, you would get a $500 refund. This year, you will get $500 plus the $800, or your state refund then would be about $1,300. If you owe that same amount of $2,000 and you only had, say, $300 deducted from your, Colorado, from your wages for Colorado income taxes, but you owed like $2,000, then basically they would keep the $800 and then you would have already had $300 taken out and then the difference of $25 and 11 would be 1400 so you would owe less tax if you are a wage earner. If you are earning less than $25,000 as a single person, 50 as a couple, you can apply for the rebate and each of you as a couple would get 800. Oh, that's a typo. It should be 1600, not 16,000. So $800 per person or $1,600 for a couple. If you're really low income and you file the PTC 104, then you will get two refunds. You will get the $800 plus, you, depending on the amount of rent or property taxes, you could get a second check in the amount of up to 1044 and the minimum on that is $350. So if you're really low income, make sure that you file the PTC 104 uh, <clears throat> because that is the uh, correct form, if you will. The biggest thing that I wanna tell you is that in terms of the forms to file, is make sure you file the correct form. If you file the incorrect form, you may be denied the refund, um, or you may have to resubmit it. If you do have to resubmit it, there is a protected filing date and you can still claim it, but it's really important to file the right form. So if you have to file state and federal income tax, then that's a whole different process. And you'll want to either have it done through, you know, an AARP site, go to H&R Block, use TurboTax, whatever. If you made less than $25,000 and you choose to use this DR0104EZ, here are the instructions. So basically you put your name and address in, you put zeros in line one, two, three, four, and 10. 
you do have to figure out what your social security income is or any other little income that you might have. And you put that on line five. If you have a small pension, if you got old age pension, um, any income that you got, you would put that on line five. And then you total on line six, line four and five. So four is zero, line four is zero. So whatever you put in line five, you put that amount on line six. On line seven, then you put $800 if you're a single person, $1,600 if you're filing jointly. On line seven, then, you again, or I mean line eight, you put either 800 or 1600. On line nine, again, you put either 800 or 1600. If you want the check to go directly to the bank, you can fill out the direct deposit information or you can have the check sent directly to you. A word of caution, while none of this is taxable income and is not supposed to be used in any way, shape, or form when figuring housing about, you know, your subsidized housing, when figuring your SNAP benefits, when qualifying for Medicaid, none of this is supposed to be used as income. However, what the past tells us over the last three or four years is that when money goes into your bank account through this direct deposit, sometimes when these um, workers in the County Department of Human Services or in housing facilities, they will end up counting this as income. And then you end up having to either lose benefits or you get charged more rent. So sometimes it's easier to just have the check come to you and then use it as cash. But that is certainly your own um, choice of how you would want to do that. The next step then is to sign and date the form and then you mail it to the Department of Revenue. They do not have a street address. You simply mail it to this 80261 with the and make sure you use the 0005 so it gets in the right mailbox. When you file, if the if you're um, needing to file the PTC 104, then you want to complete your name, address, and other information again at the top of the form. Line one is sometimes a question that causes people a little bit of confusion. So if you are on Medicare, and if you were on Medicare for the full 12 months, go ahead and put 12 in there, unless, and this is the unless, if Medicaid or paid your premium, or if you were on the Medicare savings program, so if you, the bottom line is, if you have $177 taken out of your social security check every month, then you put the number of months in line one. If somebody else pays that $177, like the state Medicaid, then you put zero in that line. Lines two through seven, then ask for your, your income. Probably for most of you, you'll have either social security or old age pension. You might have a little bit of wages, um, but you would have to make sure that you're under that $18,000. Line eight and nine, if you own your house and you pay property taxes, then put that amount in line eight. If you rent, then put the amount of rent that you paid on line nine. And then everybody should fill out line 10. And if you paid for gas or electricity to heat your house, but it's only for heating. If you only paid electricity for lights in your house, then that doesn't count. But if you paid gas like natural gas or you bought wood, 
for a fire um, place or you uh, use propane or natural gas, all of that counts. So you put that amount that you paid for the entire year on line 10. And then 11, you don't need to worry about. And line 12 <clears throat> asks you if you, uh, <clears throat> if your gas and electric was included in, or your electric was included in your rent. So if it is, then you answer yes. If it isn't, then you answer no. And then you mail that form you sign it and mail that form to the same place where you mail the other one. And again, it goes to the Colorado Department of Revenue and goes to Denver 80261-0005. If you need copies of these forms, we have given you the link um, to the state and you can get those forms. <clears throat> so the DR0 or, or the EZ form, uh, you could get at the state's website. Now, I wanna tell you also something about if you file the PTC 104. In order to get both the $800 and the PTC 104 tax credit, you must file that form by April 15, 2024. You can file the PTC 104 until December 31 of 2025. But if you file it between April 15 of 24 and December 31 of 25, you will not get the TABOR refund. So that's one of the things that we need you to do the next couple of weeks is to file the PTC 104, hopefully so you can get both refunds. If you aren't computer savvy, you can't download these forms or whatever, you are certainly welcome to call our office. Um, and our main number is 303-333-3482. Um, our toll-free number is 1-855-293. 6911. And if you have, um, if you need any information from in Spanish, call our eight. I think that's a wrong number. I think that should be 855 880 4777. I will correct that before I send out the slides. If you need help filing the forms, um, you can go to either an AARP or a VITA tax site in your area, and we've given you the telephone numbers. AARP is 1-800-829-1040, and VITA is volunteers that work in cooperation with the Internal Revenue Service, and that number is 800-906-9887. Um, <clears throat> we will be helping people to fill out the PTC 104. Um, we have a group of volunteers from Charles Schwab. We'll be helping people on May the 1st, but we'll only be able to do the PTC 104 because at that point in time, you will no longer be able to file for the Tabor refund unless you were a wage earner and you filed an extension. Some people ask if you get um, one check or two checks if you are filing for the PTC 104. And to be honest with you, I have seen both. So some of my clients have received one check for the Tabor refund and a second check for the PTC 104. And some people have received two checks. So it really depends on um, I don't know what it depends on. I just know that I've seen both. If you have already filed and you want to know the status of your refund, you can call the Department of Revenue at 303-238-7378, or you can go online and you can check it that way. You will need some of the information from the form. So before you mail in your form, 
I highly suggest if you fill it out online or a hard copy that you make a copy of it so you have the information that you need. Now, <clears throat> that is the information for the 23 Tabor refund and the 23 PTC 104. In 2022, and we helped people with this in 2023, there was the senior income tax credit. People who were eligible, who made less than $25,000, got a $1,000 tax credit. If you already received that in 2023, you only get one check. But what we know is that there are a lot of people who never received their $1,000 senior income tax credit. So people can file for that if they did not receive it. If you're 65 plus, if you do not receive the senior homestead exemption, and your overall income is less than $75,000 a year. You do have to fill out the 22DR0104, as well as a second form called the CR104. So you actually have to fill out those at two different forms, and we can mail those forms to you as well. The thing is, you have to, if you did not claim this previously, you have to use the 22 Colorado income tax forms called the DR0104. <clears throat> so just quickly, a little bit about um, the society programs. We have vision, hearing, and dental grants that we can make available. Um, the vision and hearing are available in Metro Denver. The dental grants are basically available to anybody west of I-25 um, in any of those counties. Um, so there's pretty broad um, support uh, um, in a lot of the rural uh, western counties. Uh, we have a telephone buddy program focused primarily on mental health counseling in city and county of Denver but we can place some telephone buddies outside of the city of Denver. Or if you wanna be a telephone buddy and call people once or twice a week, that would be great. We have some grant money for low vision aids. So if you need like a magnifier or some type of aid to help you read better, we do have a small amount of money to help with that. We have, um, we can do advanced care planning and we have an educational series that we're offering. You can also call for information, if you will, um, about um, wills, or not wills, but powers of attorney, um, the most form, um, you know, if you wanna talk about what to do, um, who, to tr who to trust or identify to be on your bank accounts, those kinds of things. We do a lot of general counseling and referral and public benefit counseling. Um, we have a housing and home care locator at our website if you need to uh, find other housing or home care. And then we do a holiday basket project in December. Other programs that we do, we do our Salute to Seniors. This year it will be on August the 28th or 24th at the Greek um, Event Center on 4210 East Alameda. And then we'll do a virtual program on Sunday the 25th. Um, we'll be doing Medicare Monday programs that'll be mostly education and counseling programs in October and November. Um, we're always here to help you advocate for um, additional housing. Oftentimes that's really difficult but we're certainly help, happy to help you try to navigate that. We do some consumer and professional training. And right now the legislature is driving us crazy, driving me crazy. Um, but there have been a couple of bills 
that we have testified on. And so hopefully those will go through the legislature. If anybody's interested in learning more about that, I'm certainly happy to talk with you offline. And our senior resource guidebook has just been distributed to all of the libraries in the state of Colorado. So if you would like a complimentary copy, please feel free to go to the library. They're also available at many of our local senior fairs, um, or we can mail you a copy um, if you want to pay the $10 postage and handling fee. And so that concludes our presentation today. Um, I wanna thank you for joining us and I will take a few minutes and I will go through the questions in the chat. And um, then if anybody else has questions, feel free to give or to ask those in the next few minutes. So the first question is how does filing for the Tabor refund work? if you're filing a tax exemption extension. If you are filing a tax extension, you will automatically still be eligible for the Tabor refund. Somebody says, I have a client who is not a senior who received A and D in 2023, but not consistently each month. So he cannot apply for the PTC rebate. Can he apply for the Tabor refund using the 104 EZ and put zero on the line for social security? My first question is, even if he intermittently received A and D, he still should be eligible for the PTC 104 if he lived in Colorado at all 12 months of 2023. You do not have to be housed for every single month to receive the PTC 104 uh, or pay rent. You simply have to have income of less than that amount and then have paid some rent. And if he did either of those, then he could file for the PTC 104 and definitely 100%, he can apply for the Tabor refund and put the amount that he received from A and D in the line item for Social Security. So the question is, will anybody from the Schwab be helping seniors in Eagle County on May 1? Unfortunately, Charles Schwab is only offering that volunteer service for Metro Denver. Um, we might be able to have somebody do a phone consultation um, with you on or before then, but it's only available in Metro Denver. I try really hard to make things available outside of Metro Denver, but I don't always get the support I need to do that. Are there any other questions? Okay, <clears throat> well, seeing none, um, thank you all for joining us today. And, um, oh, another, someone just put in the PTC indicates they have to receive disability income throughout the whole year. If you apply as a disabled individual, that is correct. If you apply as an older adult, a senior 65 and over, um, then it's just whatever your other income is. But the PTC is available for widows 58 and over, for disabled individuals, as well as individuals 65 and over. Other questions? Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Oh, somebody wants to join the group. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you all for joining us today and we will talk to you soon.
Viviana, we just finished the session. Um, we can send you the uh, forms or the um, slides as well as the recording uh, probably later today. And then if you still have questions, you're um, welcome to give us a call. Would that work for you?